Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I may can sense something in the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm telling you that today we stepped over into a Garden of Eden moment. There's a, there's a supernatural realm that we touch by the Spirit of the Lord. And God said that many of you have wondered why this church is not filled. And the Lord said, because I've hid you. And you look around, you say, well, Lord, we, we don't seem to be hid, and yet it's not full. But the Lord said, I have hid you, but I'm getting ready to uncover you to this nation. The Lord said, I've uncovered you to nations, but he said, I'm getting ready to uncover you to this nation. And God said, you're going to begin to branch out all over this city. And there's going to be a release of the anointing of the Spirit of the Lord that has been unprecedented. And God said all over this geographical region that there are coals from previous fires that at one time were in great flame, but they died down because they were neglected and there was a cease of putting the presence of God upon that fire. The Lord said those coals have not gone out. And God said, I'm raising you up now to begin to fan the flames of revival. And just as a liberal spirit has ruled over this city, God said there is going to be a supernatural spirit of righteousness that has ruled over this city. The Lord said that the enemy has gone after major cities in the United States of America that once flourished because of what the Lord is going to release. And God said all over this nation where the enemy has brought such debauchery and sin, whether it's been Detroit, Chicago, Los Angeles, Miami, New York City, it does not matter, says the Lord. I'm going to invade those cities by the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. God said, I do not lose. I have never lost. I am not losing now, and I'm never going to lose. And the Lord said, I am also now in a place where I am regathering and I am recovering what the enemy has taken from me by the enemy's own tactics. And the Lord said, if you want to know what I'm getting ready to do in this earth, he said, go back and look at the pattern of the book of Exodus when my children begin to come out of slavery, out of bondage, and that we were going over into their inheritance. In the beginning, says the Lord, there was a season where Pharaoh said, you can sacrifice, but he wanted them to leave the children and the animals. And if that would have happened, says the Lord, even though they would have went out towards Canaan, it would have been the enemy that was spoiling them instead of them spoiling the enemy. And so God said, I did not let Pharaoh let them go. But know this, says the Lord, there came a day when God said, enough is enough, and the word of the Lord has to be fulfilled. There has been a hovering, a hovering, a hovering of the prophetic word of the Lord that has been resonating in the atmosphere over this nation. Many of you have wondered why God wants you to do something. The Lord said, what I've been doing has been in secret and in darkness, but I'm getting ready to turn the light on. And God said, as I got ready to loose my people out of Egypt, I created an atmosphere that when they begin to leave, they spoiled the enemy. They spoiled their tormentors and their persecutors. Get ready, says God, because there is going to be a turnaround, and I am opening the heavens over the church in this hour, and I'm going to release, hallelujah, a blessing upon you, not just in the spirit, but also in the natural. For the wealth, hallelujah, that is pregnant in the atmosphere is going to be, be released by the power of the Lord. I'm going to give you homes you did not build. I'm going to let you bypass the financial system. You will not have to go to banks and humiliate yourself and ask for money. But God said, I'm going to make the enemy give back to you what he has stolen. Know this, says God, what the enemy took from you in the natural. I'm going to make him give it back seven 
unfold. For this is a ship, a ship, a ship, says the Lord in the spirit realm. I'm breaking the spirit of heaviness off of you, says God, and I'm loosening the garments of praise upon you. Even in your natural body, says God, I'm releasing divine healing. And as I begin to release it in this nation, this is ground zero in this building right now, says the Lord, that I am loosening a breath, a breath of God. I blow on you, for many of you will leave this building today, and you will say, I'm healed without the laying on of hands, because I picked you for this hour, says the Lord, and I will not put you into war with a wind of, of infirmity, but I am loosening on you the Spirit of God. When I went to prayer this morning, God spoke to me and said, prophesy to the people. And when I begin to hear the Spirit of God speak, I begin to realize that God is, He's never been silent. And I have a whole bunch of stuff swirling over my spirit. I'm trying to figure out how to release it to you by the Spirit of the Lord. God said that when Israel left Egypt, when it was time for prophecy to be fulfilled, that Israel was not running from their enemy, but they were in pursuit of their destiny. And God said, I moved on Pharaoh and his army to pursue my, pursue my people who were in pursuit of destiny because I was drawing them out in order to release judgment upon them. For God says judgment and blessing are going to occur in the same dimension. And the judgment that's going to fall on the enemy will happen in the same time, in the same dimension, that the blessing of the Lord is going to fall upon the people of God. And God said what the enemy will call judgment and devastation will be the same thing that the church calls blessing and an open heaven by the power of the Lord. Hallelujah. God said, I raised up men and women in this hour who have authority by the power of God. I'm telling you by the Spirit. One of the things I heard the Lord say was this. You are not going to be involved in a physical or even to some degree a spiritual war for God to achieve and fulfill what he has already promised is going to occur. And when I, I heard the Lord say that, he said, in the last days I declared that I would raise up the tabernacle of David. And God said, I told, even though it's David's tabernacle, he said, Solomon built it. Because Solomon was enjoying the fruits of his father's wars. And God said, David couldn't build it because he had bloody hands. And the Lord said, I'm going to keep the church out of this battle. Because I need you and you are going to rebuild the tabernacle of David. And I cannot have you with bloody hands from a war to rebuild the tabernacle. So the Lord said, I'm going to let you stand still and watch me do this by myself. It's not going to be through politics. It's not going to be through voting booths. But it's going to be by the Spirit, saith the Lord. That when I want to, said God, I will just speak a word in the atmosphere. And things will begin to shift and 
change by the power of the Lord. May God so remind you today that your God is an awesome God, that there is no demon that can intimidate the Lord, but he stands alone by his own power. Lord said that when he drew Egypt out, they thought that they were in the process of recovery. What they did not know, they were in the pursuit of their death. And God said that, that the, see if I can phrase this right. The Lord said, the church has been in a wilderness. Isaac sang, just sang about that in the, in the COVID. But God has sustained us. But the wilderness has never been the blessing of the Lord. It is the sustaining of the Lord. And the Lord said that I sustained those in the wilderness until I had a remnant that would have the faith to cross over into their inheritance. God said the supernatural is going to become the everyday occurrence. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord says that <clears throat> though there have been many that have been in the wilderness, not everybody is coming out. And the Lord also says that what we're getting ready to see in the next two years is what we have called mega churches. That we're not hungry for the presence of the Lord. That when the glory of God begins to be released and refired in this nation, the Lord said that I, I'm even paring down the number of churches that are in this country because there are so many that make no room for my presence. But God said the way they're going to die is that their congregations are going to begin to leave because they are hearing about the presence of God in other places where the Spirit of the Lord is. And the Lord said, you will see the day where mammoth church buildings that used to run in thousands will be empty and birds will fly through the sanctuaries because there has been a vacating of the presence of God in those places. And God said the manna is going to cease in the year 2023. And God says that I am doing such a work in the spirit realm in this nation and in the earth. And as I begin to release, and the Lord said you will will know when all of heaven has broke loose in the earth, when the death angel, as it was in the days of Egypt, begins to manifest itself, especially in the United States of America. God said, I'm going to loose a death angel that will begin to waltz behind closed doors, and I am going to take the creme to the creme of the enemy's camp, and I'm going to silence their voices, and the enemy enemy's going to be so busy saying, God, bury him, they're dead, that they will not take notice of what God is doing in this hour. The Lord said, I'm going after, hallelujah, the voices that have stood up against righteousness, and I am going to release, hallelujah, such a sound. And God said, it's not been enough for men just to speak under anointing for the church-like
it's it. But the world says it's not true. Uh, so God said, now I'm going to confirm the word of the Lord uh, with signs, uh, wonders, uh, and miracles. Uh, signs, uh, wonders, and miracles uh, that cannot be explained. Uh, you getting ready to see ambulances being uh, standing out in a line. Uh, they're going to come in on cots. Uh, they're going to come in on beds. Uh, they're going to come in blind. Uh, and then on the platform, saith the Lord, uh, there's going to be a release uh, of signs, uh, wonders, uh, and miracles. Uh, signs, uh, wonders, uh, and miracles. Uh, oh, my goodness. There is an electricity uh, of the Spirit of the Lord uh, that is being loosed in the atmosphere uh, of signs, uh, wonders, uh, and miraculous. Many have said because the church has no voice in politics, in entertainment, and in the media, that we are not relevant. God said, watch me. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord said it took me just a few hours to change a king from slavery to preservation of life of his own. And God said, when the death angel killed the firstborn of Pharaoh, he begged them to leap. I see birds flying Years ago, there was a place that was at one time known for the great move of the God, and, and because of sin, it wound up with a curse on it, and they said birds flew, flew through unfinished buildings. I'm telling you, by the Spirit of God, thus saith the Lord, you're going to see the day come when birds will fly through Disneyland and Disney World. because of the sin against children that has been in that place. And God said the blood, hallelujah, and I curse in the name of the Lord this new Barbie movie that has been released full of transsexual and transgender and homosexuality in the name of the Lord. Make God lose a, judge, God lose a holy judgment. Amen. Hallelujah. Go ahead and write in all that you want. What's happened is the church has been so intimidated and so silent that we're afraid to stand up and declare, thus saith the Lord. But can I tell you that God is the defense of those that are in the womb. And God is the defense, hallelujah, of the church of the Most High. So may God release a holy boldness in your spirit that you would stand up and declare, if God be for me, nobody can be against me. Lord said the reason the church has not seen the success of that one and against some of these strongholds that have been in the nation is that we tried to defeat them through natural means. Yeah. Whether it was through voting or protesting. But God said, now I'm going to deal with the strongholds. And recently we came under attack for this, so I'm going I'm to be very plain on this one. Christians will never shed blood in order to achieve victory in the spirit realm. But God will. And I, I hear all this time these people say, well, we just need to love everybody. God is love. But their definition of love is interpreted wrong. 
The word love to them means unless you agree with everything that I stand for, you don't love me. <clears throat> we can love you, but hate your ways. <clears throat> for God so loved the world. But at the end of the day, the only way you're getting in is through repentance. And yes, it is the goodness of God. But it's not just the goodness of God. The goodness of God gets a hold of you and it pulls you to a thing called repentance. And repentance means turning away from one's ways and embracing a different direction. So I see the Lord. I see God saying, I am invading the heavenlies. <clears throat> My issue is not with the liberals. It's with the demon spirits of murder and hate that rule in heavenly places, that settle down on humanity and begin to cause such division. And the Lord said, <clears throat> just as I and Peter and Jude took demons out of circulation, so am I again invading the heavenlies over this earth for a season. And I'm going to begin to remove demon spirits uh, that have manipulated and controlled men in this hour. Prepare yourself, says God, if I can take a Saul uh, who hated Christians and turn him into a Paul. Get ready. I'm going to take some men and women that the church did not like, that murdered and committed all kinds of atrocities, and I'm going to change their heart. I'm going to fill them with the Holy Ghost. They're going to stand on your platforms. They're going to sing the song of Zion, that out of their belly, hallelujah, is going to come forth the word of the Lord. Oh, I am rolling back the heavens in this hour, saith the Lord, for the church is coming out of slavery. The church is coming out of bondage, and I'm getting ready to thrust you over into a dimension where the glory, the glory, the glory of God is being released by the power of the Lord. The Lord said in a 24-hour period, I chased the dynamics of Egypt and Israel. And God said, just as I did it then, so will I do it now. And God said, in a 24-hour period in this earth, I will switch things. And I will cause the enemy to be defeated. And I will cause the church to be triumphant. And even now, says the Lord... There is a spirit of defeat amongst the enemy's camp. And God said, even now, demons are afraid and they're terrified because of what they're sensing in the spirit realm, in the earth, by the power of God. And the Lord said, I've already brought the church out of bondage. And God said, this time... The difference between Exodus and this time is there won't be a 40-year wandering in a wilderness. For the Lord said, the wilderness is behind you. And God said that now there's getting ready to be a change by the Spirit of the Lord. God said, I'm going to cause an event to take place. And when it does, it will parallel the parting of the Red Sea in the book of Exodus. For the Lord said, Israel did not know they were being pursued until the last moment because they were so busy following the word of the Lord. God said that 2024 will be a year of great peace. It will be a year of great victory. And it will be a year where it's hundredfold. And the book of Acts will begin to be relived 
in the house of God <clears throat> and issues that we're dealing with right now in this nation will be resolved in 2024 and the Spirit of God is declaring that harvest will be in full force when 2024 begins to dawn upon this nation. And out of this, saith the Lord, there are going to be streams of the glory of God that are going to begin to hit nations all over the earth. It's like, in the spirit, what I can see, it's like explosions of the glory of God. <clears throat> One of the greatest continents that's going to experience the glory of God, says the Lord, is the continent of Africa. Hallelujah. 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 And God said, because... The enemy has tried to exterminate in that nation, or nations and in that continent, and it's ground zero for AIDS, and slavery began over there. God said that I am going to rectify things, and I'm going to begin to lose a supernatural arm of deliverance and favor and blessing upon the continent of Africa, says the Lord. Hallelujah. And also know this, saith God. That this spirit of racism that has been loosed in the last few years, especially in the last three or four years in the United States of America, the architect of that thing that is hid behind closed doors and has infiltrated our culture until there is so much hatred in this nation with Black Lives Matters and everything else. God said there will never be great revival in the United States of America. America until black and white ministries and churches are able to hug each other's neck and to lay down the atrocities of the past. So the Lord said for every minister that is going to oppose and they preach that kind of mess and they keep injecting it into the veins of their people, God said your days are numbered and I'm going to deal with you for I am going to answer the prayer of my son when he said, Father, let them be one, even as we are one. And God said, I'm going to lose a supernatural brotherly love amongst the blacks and the whites. And there's going to be a release of the glory and of the majesty of God. For I, this is my hour. This is my day, saith God. This is my nation. I birthed you, saith the Lord, to reflect the glory of God. So so in the spirit of the Lord, I loose an anointing. Let the anointing break every yoke, every yoke, every yoke in the name of Jesus. And let there be a spirit of purity and unity in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. God says, I'm going to make evil men uncover themselves. The Lord said, they, we call them whistleblowers. But God said, I'm going to begin to make the evil men and women in politics and in other dimensions uncover each other. Lord said there's going to be such a release, a blessing, that it's going to be like the four lepers in Samaria. God said that man cannot fix the dilemma that this nation is in right now and other nations. It's impossible. We do not have voices in the natural realm that can bring a remedy to the debacle that we are in in this nation so God said I'm going to do it myself God said I'm going to do it by myself and the Lord says just as I showed up in the Syrian and the Assyrians camp and made them hear a noise of an army that was not there 
Hallelujah. Hayabubo Sunday. Hallelujah. I made them hear something that was not there in the natural. I made them leave their clothes. I made them leave their soup that was cooking. I made them leave their weapons until there was just a debris trail of them running for their lives. God said, and the same thing that I did with Sennacherib and Hezekiah when I killed 185,000 with one angel, so am I going to send suddenly a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, saith the Lord, and I'm going to lose a sound that will put fear and terror in the hearts of the enemy and I'm going to make them leave the spoil, the spoil the spoil God said go get it, go get it go get it because it belongs to you <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah God said the reason that my presence is going to be so heavy in the building is there will no longer be mixture. The Lord said that I have put a, a protection, a hedge of protection around this body because the enemy hates it. And the day we signed the papers for the building that we got, hell cried. Because what he wanted was us for me to retire and us to disband. But God stepped in, did something supernatural by the Spirit of the Lord. I declare a double portion on every one of you. In fact, seven times. For every one of you that have so sacrificially sowed into this vision, that you, have, you thought you were sowing into a building, but God said you've sowed into your own future by the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. I see businesses exploding. I see mortgages being paid off in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. But more than that, God said, the money that you sowed becomes currency in the spirit realm and it buys healing. It buys the souls of your children. It is buying restoration to families. It is buying, hallelujah, the deliverance from depression and cancer and heaviness and despair. Because you took a chance, says the Lord, and gave to me. Now, says the Lord, I am going to give back to you. Pressed down, shaken together, heaped up, running over. Shall not I, but shall men, men, men given to your bosom by the Spirit of God. Oh, little children, oh, little children, your father would say to you today, I hath not seen, ear hath not heard, neither is in it to the hearts of men those things that God has prepared for those that love him. Did I not come through for you in the evening time? Did I not show up when it looked like it was over? Did I not deliver you when it looked like you were locked down forever how much more can your God rise up in this hour and redeem and set free and deliver and answer prayers by the power of the Holy Ghost you got a God that with him nothing 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 is impossible says the Lord I hear the Lord saying, as the woman, I believe to Elisha said, the creditors are coming. And they're going to take my sons. What do I do? He said, borrow as many pots as you can get. Because there's anointing getting ready to be in the house. 
Can I tell you, hallelujah, that many of you that looks like you are in dire situations, the Lord says you need to go back in the spirit and begin to tell the Lord, I am born of you the pot, hallelujah, because by faith I am declaring that God is going to release a river of anointing that is going to begin to fill it up by the truth and sell it not. Oh, righteousness wins. Hell loses. The devil's going to be put in the lake of fire. And the church is going up to the marriage supper of the Lamb. You cannot be defeated. You cannot go down. You are delivered by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. May God give you eyes to see and ears to hear and a heart to understand that there is an anointing on our nation. There is an anointing upon you. Uh, shake it off, shake it off, shake it off. Uh, stand up and declare, uh, if my God be for me, uh, nobody can be against me. Hey, a bubble Sunday. <clears throat> We're going to make the devil regret that he ever engaged us in battle. Should have left us alone. Hallelujah. When you had Hollywood and you had politics, you should have been satisfied with that. Should have left our children alone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You should have left our church alone. Na ma ma Sunday. Can I tell you that God drew a line and he stood there and the devil stepped over it. And when you step over the line with God, you lose. And I'm declaring by the Spirit of the Lord that even as God fought for the Israelites, God is going to do that now in the earth for the church. And that there is an exchange of authorities and powers. We're going to see men take office in the next two years around the world that we should never have seen. Because God is setting the stage for harvest. Hallelujah. Marabobo Sunday. And I believe that this year, for Israel to go in into their inheritance, they had to have spoil. They could, God would not send them into Canaan land empty-handed. <clears throat> and really, what God called spoil was just back pay for all the years of slavery for no paycheck. So God said, I'm going to take it all from you. We are coming into a season where the liberals, I can see this in the Holy Ghost, we have gone so long without being a voice and having a say in the policies of this nation and the liberals have made it. And God said, now I'm going to flip it. <clears throat> and the Lord said, I'm going to rescind laws, amendments. And God said, just to show you that I can, I reversed Roe versus Wade in a administration and in a Senate that was controlled by liberal voices, I did it anyway because I'm God. And God said, get ready, hallelujah. Not a bobo Sunday. And the Lord said, <clears throat> prepare yourself because I'm getting ready to visit you a lot more often.
God said the days are coming in which <clears throat> the church will be full every day. Every day. But there will be such a manifested presence of the Lord that it will be like it's the highlight of your day. And for tithers, the seed that you have planted is going to come back in such a harvest that many of you will be able to retire. Many of you will have such an abundance of finance. You will own businesses, and the businesses that you own will have such favor upon them, says the Lord, that I am going to lift off of my children financial oppression because I'm going to create an atmosphere in which your virtue and their time is able to be given to me. And while you are in my house, says God, praising my name, I will speak over your businesses and I will speak over your agendas. And when you come out, you will find out that there has been increase while you have been praising the name of the Lord. And yet you have not put your hand to the plow and you have not planted any seed. For then this hour says, God, the seed time is over. And this is a time of reaping and this is a time of harvest. And not only for the righteous, but for the wicked, saith God. And as I begin to bring this harvest into the full effect, the Lord says angels will stand on the balcony of glory and they will stand with envy to see what God has bestowed upon the people of the Lord. I want to end this today with saying this. I heard the Lord say, we have already crossed through the Red Sea. Our enemy has already been taken care of in the spirit. We have already crossed over the Red Sea, and we're getting ready to enter into the land of Canaan. And the first thing God did in Canaan was take the strongest city of the Canaanites and reduce it to rubble. That's a declaration that this land belongs to my people. And the Lord says, I'm going to emphasize it, and I'm going to put an exclamation mark on what I do because I'm going to make the enemy report it. <laughs> and say, we have no explanation. And we don't know how this happened, but this is what's happened. And God said, get your dancing shoes on. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want you to stand with me. For the next week, I want you as much as possible to go into your prayer time without petition but I want you to begin to praise God for what he's already done and for what he's getting ready to do hallelujah hallelujah now in the name of the Lord I come against if God says I preserve the youth of righteous people I break the spirit of Alzheimer's in this nation. And I break the spirit of old age that takes our virtue and our youth. And I declare that there's a Moses and a Caleb anointing on righteous men and women in this building in the name of the Lord. And so now, Father, I ask you to begin to lose from one side of this building to the other side a renewing of our youth. Hallelujah. A renewing that, that hips and knees oh, and, and joints are touched 
by the Spirit of the Lord and that your health, hallelujah, is renewed like an eagle unto the Lord and that God will begin to give you the ability to do things for Him in the kingdom that you've not been able to do for years. That when you wake up in the morning, your feet will swing over the side of the bed and you'll say, oh, what is that? I feel like, hallelujah, I got feet like Hind Street. May God equip you right now. May every viewer across the world, under the sound of my voice, that out of my vessel, the Holy Ghost loses a virtue of baptism upon you. In the name of the Lord, may God anoint your eyes to begin to see in the Spirit. May God anoint your ears to begin to hear what thus saith the Lord because you have a righteous God. Why don't we just fill up the front, everybody, as much as you can. Come on. We're going to start this off as you come in here instead of telling God what you need Him to do. I want you to present your need this way. Lord, I want to thank you that you've already done it. God, I want to thank you that that note has already been paid. God, I want to thank you that you've already given me the house that I've been believing for. God, I want to praise you that the doctor says he can't find any cancer. Lord, I want to thank you that next Sunday my children are standing with me in this building praising the name of the Lord. God, I want to thank you, hallelujah, that the anointing of the Lord has shown up and the sinner, hallelujah, the wealth of the wicked has been loosed upon me in the name of the Lord. God, we praise you for spoil. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my
Thank you.